So when it comes to rating our marriages 1 to 10, there's usually a gap between husband and wife. The guys have it closer to 10. The ladies often it's south of that. In many cases, way south. Well, at least in the early years of holy matrimony. Our couple on the show today, they were at opposite ends of the scale. But they found help and they found hope. And uh, they, when they tied the knot, they meant it for life. Dave and Ann Wilson from Detroit, welcome to 100 Huntley Street. Thank you. Glad to be here. And I know it's not just about uh, improving your marriage, because we can all improve, but it's really to get healthy. So, Dave, let's go back to uh, the 10th anniversary. Do we have to? Yeah, I know, it's painful, <laughs> brother. <laughs> I think a lot of guys are going to hear this guy. I relate to that. <laughs> so you think at that point, things are going well. You're, you're a chaplain for the Detroit Lions of the National Football League, ministry, you've got a family, beautiful wife. You're going to have your 10th anniversary. You got the roses. Everything's happening. What what was going on, man? You thought things were good, right? I mean, I honestly thought, on a scale of one to ten, we're a ten, but you can't say ten, so I no. say nine point eight. Okay. And I was convinced my wife would agree. So when we go out on this ten year and your ten year anniversary date, you know, I had the roses, one for each year. So a rose would come, and we'd talk about year one, year two. Very romantic. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And on the way home, I thought it'd be cool to go parking, which was another surprise. And I mean go parking yeah, and uh, park in the parking lot of the school where we were about to start our church, which was a dream come true. And yeah, long story short is when I went over to kiss her in the front seat of this Honda Accord, she turns her head. And that's the first moment when I thought, maybe we're not a 10. That's the first time. I mean, I had no idea. So I tried to kiss her again because I just thought she didn't know. I mean, there's no way she didn't want to kiss me. We've been romantic. We've talked. Yeah. I've spent money on a nice meal. <laughs> So I go to kiss her again, and she turns away, and then I'm like, okay, what's wrong? And that's when I found out. So what was wrong, Ann? <laughs> well, at first, I said nothing. You know, it's what we say as women sometimes is when he says, what's wrong? Nothing, because I didn't want to wreck the night. Like, he'd gone all out. He made this spectacular night, and I didn't want to get into it, but he kept pressing. And so finally, I was like, all right, here we go, because the truth is the way that Dave saw it wasn't the way I saw it. Mm. I was like, are you kidding? You're gone all the time. You're not engaged with me. You're not engaged with the kids. And so I was really frustrated. And I felt like if you gave me a scale of one to 10, I'm like, we're a one, probably closer to a 0.5. Oh my God. Right. And Painful. so, yeah. So that night when he finally, he was pushing me, what's wrong? I finally said, I have lost all my feelings for you. I have nothing. And it was like total silence in the car. And, and I was ready for Dave to get really angry because that's how our pattern was. We go into this, I say, this is what's going on. He says, no, it's not, I'm always home. And then I thought, we're just gonna cycle right back into our same pattern of fighting. But this night didn't end up like that. So Dave, that must have felt like a punch in the stomach. Why did you not get angry? You did something, I mean, I was very impressed when I was reading your story in the book. Mm. Tell me what you did. In that parking lot, we're gonna plant the church. Yeah, and when she did say, I lost my feelings for you, I did initially start to get angry. In fact, I think I put it in the book, I don't even remember, but I, I reached back in the back seat, and mm -hmm. that's where I had a day planner. Yeah. Remember the days when we wrote our <laughs> yeah. schedule on paper? It's on the phone now. Yeah, right. I, I was reaching for it to prove to her, because I could show you, I have been home, and I was feeling that, like, you're wrong. There's no way I've been gone. And as I'm reaching, I, I, I can feel like it's yesterday, I heard the voice of God. And it wasn't an audible voice. It was just the Holy Spirit of God lives in the soul of a follower of Christ. That's me. That's you. And he nudged me with two words. Shut up. That's how direct it was. Shut up. Well, <laughs> and sometimes God can be that direct. Yeah, you know? and he needs to be that direct yeah. sometimes with guys. Because I mean, again, the thing I love about your book, by the way, it's called Vertical Marriage. The one secret that will change your marriage. And I want to get into that whole vertical aspect of it. But Anne, one of the challenges that we have, you know, for men, is, Kate, we're working. Our, our number one thing is we're going to provide for our family. But the emotional disconnection, is that what's, is that was really what was hitting you hard, that he wasn't engaged with you? That yeah, way? I think for Dave and I, we had this dream of starting our life together, planning this church together. And I saw us as like, we're doing this together. And all of a sudden, I felt like, wait, you're going without me, and I'm here with the kids. Like, let's do everything together. Not that I want Dave with me, but I felt like, everything else was more important than our family. Mm. And so at first I was thinking like, this is wrong, and I got angry about it. And after a while, I, my, my anger turned to bitterness, and then my bitterness turned to resentment, and pretty soon I didn't even care. 
And so when the, he would leave the house and I'd be like, whatever, see ya, which was wrong of me. And so that night in the car, Dave ended up getting on his knees in our Honda Accord. With the steering wheel in his back. Yes. And <laughs> yeah. he started praying. Well, I mean, I'd, I, I would say this. That night I realized everything she just said was true. Mm. Everything I was doing outside the home was more important. I was not home. Detroit Lions Ministry, the church, we were actually traveling around the country, just started speaking on marriage and family. Think about that. Mm. And here <laughs> our marriage is in crisis. And here's what I realized that night, and it's the whole idea of vertical marriage, is God said to me after he said, shut up, which, was, which really was listen, I heard him say one more word, and it was repent. And I knew in one word what God was saying is, if you want this to work, this horizontal marriage, it'll never work unless this vertical Jesus is first. And I'm telling you, it sounds crazy for a pastor to say this, but I was doing the work of God and leaving God in the, in the dust. I was not mm -hmm. intimate with him. And I realized in one word, oh my goodness, if I don't get him back in control first in my life, this doesn't have a chance. So, th so that's why I felt like I need to pray right here and I need to be on my knees. I don't always pray on my knees, but that night, again, I don't know how I got <laughs> turned around in a Honda Accord. <laughs> that's a little car. And you joined him, man. That was so cool. Okay, we're going to get into more of what it practically looks like to get into a vertical marriage mm -hmm. and the importance of not trying to change the other person. We'll be right back. Dave and Ann Wilson are my guests. Vertical Marriage is the name of the book. Uh, there's so much great truth in this and very, very practical. You guys were so honest and so vulnerable. Kudos to you both. Thank you. When we, a lot of couples get married and I do marriage counseling. I know you guys do as well. Uh, the thinking is, okay, I, I really like this guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said like, this guy's the jock. Yeah. He's the good looking he's dude. Every, look at him, look how I mean, he's, he is. he's great, but he was a little bit full of himself, right? <laughs> but so you're thinking, I mean, you put it in the book. So you say, okay, maybe I can change him. Mm -hmm. Why is that a bad idea? <laughs> well, I think I did. Like I went all out, like I am going to change him. I'm going to make him better. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. But what happened was I thought by doing that, Dave would be motivated. So I started critiquing or pointing out things he wasn't doing. Like, honey, if you just did this, or why don't you do this? Thinking, oh, he's being motivated. And all it did was make him pull away. Because here's what happens. I think if I change Dave, I'll make myself happy. And I'll make him better, and then I'll be happy. So it became about me instead of about God. You can't change a person. Mm -mm. You can try. Like, I tried. I yeah. tried for a long time. You gave time. a good shot. Yeah, but all it did was it made Dave resentful. And I think that really hurt us. Yeah, I, I discovered, and this, this went on, Greg, for decades. Her trying to change me. Not I, I never tried to change her. Yeah. I never would do that. <laughs> no, we're both doing it, you know, yeah. and yeah. I think sure. so many spouses do. But I actually told her, I actually told a crowd one time, it's a long story in the book, but here's the, the bottom line. I, I told her, I feel like everywhere I go outside the home, I'm getting cheered. People are saying, you're good at this. They applaud me, not literally, but affirmed. Sure. And I feel like when I come in our house, I get booed. Now, he I didn't say this like to that. me one-on-one. -on -one. He said it in front of a whole group of people. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, he said it in front of all these people. Oh. So we go home and I, we're in the car and I was like, you think I'm trying to change you? I am helping you. Oh, <laughs> that's so, what she said. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation. Right. Because right. there is that difference. And, he, and you talk about it in the book. There is, I, I, I need my wife to critique me at times, vice versa, right. as long as it's out of love. and yeah. it's, But not to criticize or That's roll right. the eyes. Yes, right. and I was criticizing and critiquing. And I think if you talk about a love tank and filling that up with love, I was giving very little affirmation or even just really thanking Dave. I was continually critiquing him. And I think he lost all of his motivation. And I think that made him leave. I actually life. didn't want to come home. I mean, I didn't know it. In yeah. this, but I want, you know, I wanted to be out there where people are affirming Plotting you, and, and, and everybody's yeah. that way. Every man, every woman, you're drawn like a magnet to affirmation. And, I, and I'll just say this because this is a long story, but she started to cheer me, not literally, although I think it would be good for wives to put on cheerleading outfits. Anyway, she <laughs> she started to cheer me, and uh, what I mean by that, speak words yeah. of life, affirm me. I remember when she first started doing that again decades ago, I didn't believe it. Like. I'm not that. She'd say, you're an amazing spiritual leader of our, of our home. And I'm like, you've never said that. Because <laughs> I'd heard the opposite for so many years. And, yeah. But I'm not kidding. Over time, she started consistently say that. And here's what I've noticed in me is when she critiqued me, I became worse. 
Mm. It's almost like, oh yeah, you don't think I'm any good? Well, I won't be any good. When she started to speak life, mm. I started to rise up to be the man she said I was, which I wasn't yet. And I've noticed this with men. When you speak life to them, they become better and you get the man you dream of. Mm. But here's the thing. You can't change your spouse. You can only change yourself. You've got to sort of offer that to God. But trust me, when you speak life to your man, speak life to your woman, speak life to your kids, yes, something magical happens as they become better people. Well, and I wow. think what it is, God's always cheering for us. Like yeah. he looks at you, he looks at me and Dave, and he goes, look at you, look at the greatness. And I had to ask God, God, I don't see that. Like, I don't see the greatness. Show me the way you see Dave. And I started noticing the good. And so then if I had a critique to Dave, for Dave, he would receive it because I wasn't constantly criticizing him. Right. Now, I want to talk about before our time ends here. Vertical marriage, okay, it's God, but it's more than that. I mean, it's mm. not more than God, right. but in terms of how does that live out when we, we don't put the pressure on each other, mm. but we have that relationship with God? How does that practically work out every mm. day? And I think the bottom line is we try to find from our spouse what we're missing in our life. We even have a term for it, I found the one. You know, I mean, the soul me. Yeah, oh, I've found yeah. her, I've found him. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's beautiful. But then you get married and you think they're going to bring you happiness. And when, they're, when you're discouraged or disappointed, and there will happen at some point, whether it's six years in or six minutes in, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm not as happy as I thought I'd be by marrying this woman. Here's what we think. I married the wrong person. Yes. That's why we say the secret that changes your marriage is, no, you didn't marry the wrong person. You're looking in the wrong place. You're never going to find happiness here. Not that this isn't great or anything on earth or pleasure. It's like you were made to find happiness from the only person that can give you happiness. It's in a relationship with Jesus. And again, like you said, Greg, it isn't I go to church or I believe in God. No, it's a real intimate relationship with God that fills you. Yeah. So think about this. Now you come back to your marriage. What? I don't need to get from her. I've gotten from God. I can now come back and serve and love yeah, and yeah. vice versa. That's what the sort of the, the genius of vertical marriage is. Mm. Now, again, it isn't a pat answer, but man, when this is real, yeah. it changes everything. And how does it look real to you, Anne? Like, again, I, you know, this is, uh, you know, most of our people watching yeah. are followers of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get the thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's God. And it, but yeah. how does that, how does that live out for you on a daily basis? Well, I mean, I think one of the things that happened for Dave and I after this 10 year anniversary was Dave, we said, we need to change this because my feelings did not come back overnight. And one of the things that happened was he said, let's go on a date night. And, and talk. And for Dave, he's like, oh no, if we talk, does that mean I'm in trouble? But I was super amazed at this because he would, we would go on a date night once a week. Here's the other thing, we did that and we also started praying daily together. That's what it looks like on an everyday thing. Which is mm -hmm. something we weren't doing either. So right. there's the vertical prayer, but the vertical But on together. the date yeah. night, yeah. here's what together. he would yeah. say. Okay, scale of one to 10, where are we? And Greg, I hated asking this question. I didn't <laughs> even want to know. I just like, I know it's not going to be what I think. Is he 9.8 yet? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Way to go, Dave. <laughs> and he, but he would ask that. And here's what he would say. If I would say we're a four, he would say, I thought this was so humble. He would say, what does it take to get us to a five Good. or a six? Like, what would that look like for you? Which is such a servant's heart. And that might have melted my heart and restored feelings. Wow. Well, thank you guys for coming on the program. Um, we didn't even get to the sex part. <laughs> Uh, okay. Hey guys, it's in, it's in the book. You got to read the book because we're all the same. I can just tell you, I'm not going to give away anything. But uh, again, thanks guys for coming on and being again honest. Uh, get the book; it's very important. Uh, Vertical marriage: the one secret that will change your marriage. Got some great YouTube videos out there as well if you want to hear more from these guys. And if you're dealing with a marriage issue today, maybe you feel like you've given up or I married the wrong person. You know what? We have people that will pray with you, that love you. They're not going to judge you. You know, maybe your marriage is a one or maybe it's a zero, but with God, there is hope. Give us a call, 1-866-273-4444, and there are people that will encourage you because we all need that and pray with you. We'll be right back.